today I'm going to guide you on how to use Zoom for online teaching. I promise you that the instructions will be to the point and easy to follow. I will start the tutorial with the basics and later dive into more advanced features offered by Zoom Cloud Meetings which can be helpful for teachers and students. Once again, rest assured, everything will be explained step by step. Towards the end of this how-to video, I'll share an easy tip that will help teachers and students with kids at home to host or attend lessons on Zoom without any background noise. Stay tuned. Firstly, let me outline the limitations of using Zoom for free and the available upgrade options. The most important limitation of the free version is the 40 minutes time limit for each meeting or lecture in our case. For our institution, each lecture in the classical classroom setting used to be for 50 minutes. But we adapted to the 40 minute time limit as anyways an average student's attention span while learning online is pretty short. If you purchase the pro version, the time limit per meeting is 24 hours, which is like overkill. But wait a minute, you can sign up for an education account with your institution's email address to get the 40 minute time limit lifted. This time limit waiver is only to support teachers during the coronavirus pandemic with no deadline as to when the limits will reset. Another limitation is the 100 participants per meeting limit, which is applicable for free, education, and pro accounts. If you are teaching more than 100 students at a time, then I would suggest you ask your school administration to get the business plan for your school as it allows up to 300 participants at a time. Lastly, attendance tracking is a breeze on the pro account. For me, that's a time-saving feature and well worth the $15 monthly price. Before you decide to upgrade, try out the basic version or the education version to see if it suits your requirement. Okay, now let's start with how to use Zoom meetings for online teaching. To begin, sign up for a free account with either Facebook, Google or your school email address. For removing the time limit, I suggest using the school email address. Your school has to be in Zoom's database of educational institutions. If your school is not in Zoom's database, you can submit a request to get it listed so that you can enjoy the educational plan. If you're using a Facebook or Google account, make sure you sign in with Facebook or Google password and not a new password. You might have to confirm your email address by clicking on the activation link sent to your email inbox. Skip the step for inviting your colleagues. Don't copy your personal meeting URL as it has your meeting password embedded and is a security risk. Once you sign up, you will be taken to the meetings page on the Zoom Cloud Meetings website. You can directly host and join a meeting from this website. Plus, there are tons of ways to host or join a Zoom meeting. For the sake of simplicity, I will suggest you the best option according to my experience, and that is downloading a Zoom app on your computer, be it a Windows, Mac, or a Linux. Go to https colon slash slash zoom dot us forward slash download and download Zoom client for meetings. Please wait for a few seconds for it to download. Then, install it on your computer.
open the Zoom Cloud Meetings app on your PC or Mac and sign in. Tick the checkbox Keep Me Signed In if you are not sharing your laptop or computer or Mac or whatever you've got with someone else in your family. The Zoom app will then open on your computer. It will show you the time, 10 buttons and a search box. It will also tell you no upcoming meetings today. Hooray! Now let me give you a brief overview of the Zoom desktop app's home screen buttons. Button 1 Home That's where we are right now. Even if you're at work, you are still at home, your Zoom home. So if you press any button in this row, say chat or contacts, you can quickly jump back to your Zoom home if you press the home button. Easy, isn't it? Button 2. Chat. This is where you can chat with students, colleagues and other school staff through written words. Sweet. You will also see any files you have shared with the students, like PowerPoint presentations, class notes, etc. And you can also create channels which are similar to WhatsApp groups. As in, you can create a channel named Junior and place all Junior students in there. That way, it is easy for you to share messages and resources with a particular class. And yes, you can also join channels created by others from the same page. Lastly, there is this contact request button, which is similar to Facebook requests. If someone wants to chat with you and if they are not in your address book, they can send a request to you to accept them as your friend. I mean contact. The same principle applies if you send them a contact request. They can go into the chat section and accept your request. Button 3. Meetings. This is where you will see your PMI or personal meeting ID, which is similar to having a personal mobile phone number. Pro users have the option to change this PMI to their liking. For teaching purposes, I will not recommend taking a class with PMI because the PMI does not expire. This means that students can click on the link that you sent previously to join any meeting that you're hosting, whether they are invited or not. As a teacher, you should be using this plus button to schedule a meeting or an online class. More on that just a bit later in the video. As for now, let me continue explaining all the fancy buttons in the Zoom Cloud Meetings app. Next, we have the recorded button. Here you will see all the meetings or class sessions that you recorded. Yes, Zoom has a meeting recorder if you want to replay the video of your online class later. Just remember to tell your students that this class will be recorded for quality and training purposes. Kidding. Okay, let's move on without wasting any time. Button 4. Contacts. This is just like the contacts in your mobile phone or an old-fashioned telephone directory. You can either manually add a contact by typing in the email address or you can go to the cloud contacts section to connect your Gmail or Microsoft accounts to get the list of email addresses into Zoom directly. Also, this is another place you can create channels or groups of contacts to chat or meet with without having to pick each contact to send a meeting invite. So if you teach multiple classes, you can create channels like class 1, class 2, class 3, etc. and segregate individual students as per their class. When sending a class meeting invite later to a particular class, you will save a lot of time as you won't have to pick individual students. Just send the invite to that specific class channel, that's it. 
Button 5 is actually a search bar. Once you've used Zoom meetings for ages and you want to search, say, when did you take a lesson on photosynthesis or human evolution, you can search with the keywords here to get a list of meetings and the details of the same. Next, button 6 looks like me. Joking, it is actually the main menu of the Zoom app with 100 different options under it. Let's start with option 1 of 100. I know it will be too much for you all, so I will stick with the simple basics as I promised. For now, just remember that you can set your status here like available, away or do not disturb if you are in a class and do not want to be bothered by anyone. This mode mutes any notifications of chat messages that come in. You can read these messages at a later time by clicking on the chat button. You can also set the time frame for do not disturb mode to be active. Great news, we are just 4 more buttons to go. 4 more buttons in under 4 minutes. Let's start. We go back to home and you will see these 4 buttons here. New meeting. Clicking on this button will start a new meeting instantly. But as a teacher, you won't do unplanned, unscheduled, spontaneous meetings with your class unless there is some emergency and you want to take a meet right now. Next, we have join. This is where you can join a meeting hosted by someone else. You will seldom use this button because if you have a meeting invitation sent by someone else, it will directly take you to into the meeting. As in, once you click on the link of the meeting invitation, it will directly take you into the meeting. You won't have to come here and manually join the meeting. Now, attention, attention, attention. This is where the important part comes. The schedule button is what you'll use the most and it is an essential button for you as a teacher. Hence, we will cover that later when I guide you step by step on how to take an online classroom. Stay tuned. Lastly, you have the share screen button, which is also useless outside of a meeting. While you are in a class meeting, you will get the share screen button to share presentations, whiteboard, etc. with students. That's it and those were the 10 terrific buttons. Stuff to know before you take your first class. Check your profile picture, especially if you've signed up using your personal account. If you don't see a profile picture, then click change picture. Change. Upload. Open and save. Then move on to the settings page. Ensure that the waiting room is enabled. This will make every student who joins a meeting wait in a virtual waiting room before you allow them in the meeting. Don't worry if you have 100 students and you don't want to hit the allow button 100 times. Instead, you can take a quick look at the list to spot unknown names and kick them out. Once you have a clean list of students waiting in the Zoom waiting room, click the Admit All button to admit everyone in one go. Within the settings page, disable the option which says Embed Passcode and Invite Link for One Click Join. This is a small security measure to prevent Zoom bombings or unknown people from joining your meeting to spoil it. Zoom bombers or meeting spoilers with a link to your class meeting won't be able to join with one click. They will have to know and enter a passcode. This step should somewhat prevent Zoom bombings unless there is someone in your class who has leaked the passcode. Then make sure join before the host is off. It is off by default anyway, but double check if it is still off. This will make sure the class meeting does not start before you join. 
because you are the teacher and responsible for the meeting. This specific setting will make sure your meeting only starts when you are present. Secondly, if you are using the basic version of Zoom, then the meeting timer won't start till you join. Next, tick Mute Participants upon Entry to avoid a sudden burst of noise at the start of the meeting. Also, enabling this setting adds an additional layer of security cover to your meetings. With this setting enabled, only you can unmute specific participants when you want them to talk. Students who wish to speak can raise hands virtually, then you can unmute such students temporarily to allow them to speak. I will show you how students can raise hands and how you will get to know when they have raised their virtual hands when we do a test meeting. With this setting enabled, no one else can randomly talk rubbish into spoiling the meeting. Upcoming meeting reminder should be enabled to get a reminder notification from Zoom on your Windows or Mac device. Even if the setting is set to off, you will still get an email reminder from Zoom or your Google Calendar. This setting is just a way to be double sure that you don't miss a meeting in case your email is not working on that day. Next is screen sharing, another feature that can control Zoom bombings. Set who can share to host only. This will prevent others from sharing stuff without taking your permission first. You can, when the meet is on, permit participants or students to share their presentation or project work. Disable desktop screen share for users and only allow specific applications to be shared. This enhances privacy as it doesn't let your students see files and folders on your desktop. When you start screen sharing with this setting enabled, you can freely browse folders and files on your computer without the worry of students reading the names of files and folders on your computer. They will only see the screen when the PowerPoint or the document that you want to share opens. Annotations Check only the user who is sharing can annotate. The annotation feature allows you to draw, write and highlight stuff that you are teaching. It is like a virtual marker and you don't want a miscreant to draw or write anything with bad taste while you are presenting. So this specific setting will prevent others from just writing or drawing something on the screen when you're sharing the screen. You can, of course, give the presentation and annotation access to a student or a group of students when you require them to explain something. Next setting I recommend you to change is allow participants to rename themselves. Disable this option so that the names of your students remain the name of your students and don't change into fantasy names. Enable breakout rooms. This feature lets you split the class into smaller virtual groups. Students in each breakout room can talk to each other but they cannot speak to the peers in the other breakout rooms. This is a great feature for teachers as you can assign group activities for your class when required. You also have the option to allow the host to assign participants to breakout rooms when scheduling. Enable this too. This will allow you to pre-decide groups of students who will be the part of breakout rooms at the time of scheduling the class itself. Next, we have Identify Guest Participants in the Meeting, another essential security feature to enable. This will identify and mark guest participants or participants not using the school account in your meeting's participant list. This feature is useful only if your educational institution has provided email addresses to all the students. Example, John Max at schoolname.com, Jane Smith at schoolname.com, etc. 
but if there is no such institutional email address given to them and the participants are joining the meet with their personal account then this feature won't work as it will show every participant as a guest so leave it off if there is no standard school or college email account assigned to the students next you go to the recording tab on the top tick automatic recording on this will allow you to record all your classes to your computer if that is required by your school or college administration and if required by your state law enable recording disclaimer and also tick ask participants for consent when a recording starts paid zoom users will have the option to record the meetings on the cloud which is a much better option as it won't take a ton of storage space from your computer and cloud recordings can be shared with the students who couldn't attend the lecture due to a genuine reason. That was all the settings part before you take your first class on Zoom. If you notice, I've covered a lot of security enhancing features built into Zoom meetings. All of them combined should provide ample protection from Zoom bombings. Zoom bombings were pretty common in the beginning when people weren't actually using Zoom security features. But rest assured, you shouldn't worry about miscreants when you enable the recommended settings. Now let's move on to starting your first meet. Let's recap what we have covered so far. We started with Zoom plans and pricing and we now know the time limit and participant limit of Zoom meetings. Then we covered how to sign up for a Zoom account and how to download Zoom on your computer. Then we went through the 10 buttons or Zoom's desktop app for computers and learned that out of the 10 buttons, you will use the schedule button the most. Next. We covered various Zoom settings to change before we start our first class meeting. We also covered different security related settings to prevent Zoom bombings. And now it's time for a test meeting and how to use various Zoom functions when your class meeting is on. Finally, let's start the meeting process. We will schedule and host our first Zoom meeting right now. Step 1. Open the Zoom app on your computer if it isn't open yet. Step 2. Click on the Schedule button under the Home tab. Schedule meeting window will open up and the step 3 will be to type the topic of your meeting. For this tutorial, I'm going to type computer science. Step four, I will choose a meeting start date, time and duration. Note that if you're using the Zoom basic plan, you'll get a notification about the meeting duration limits if you choose the 45 minute duration. I will select the meeting duration as 30 minutes. Wait. Why isn't there an option of 40 minutes or why isn't there an option to adjust the time limit apart from the pre-listed options? Because whatever meeting duration you set here doesn't really matter. The meeting will continue until the time you end the meeting, even after the meeting duration set on this screen has crossed. The only exceptions are the 40 minute meeting limit on the free account and 24 hour limit on the premium and education accounts. Step 5 The Meeting ID Use the option Generate automatically to assign a new ID for every class meeting randomly. This adds an additional layer of security as a meeting ID is not fixed. So if a miscreant has your old meeting ID, it will be useless as every meeting will use a randomly generated number as a meeting ID. If you wish, you can change the password of your meeting. I suggest using the randomized password. 
Step 6. Moving on, take the waiting room. Step 7. For video, I want my video to be on for the participants. It depends on your school or college. A few colleges mandate students to be on video so that they can be seen and a teacher can be aware of what they are doing actually on the other side. For this test meeting, I will leave this off. Step 8. Now comes the important bit, the calendar. This is where the meeting schedule will appear for you and your students. Most of the students I know are using G Suite or Google Suite of applications for education. You can also use Outlook or other calendars if you want to. For this test meeting, I will use Google Calendar. Step 9. Click on Advanced Options and once again, make sure Enable Join Before Host is unchecked. Mute participants upon entry is checked and as per requirement, automatic meeting recording can either be checked or unchecked. Step 10. Click Save. Since I chose Google Calendar, Google will ask which of my Google Accounts calendar I want to use for this meeting. That's because I have multiple Google Accounts. Just sign in to the relevant account and give Zoom the permission to manage your calendar. On the right hand side of the screen, you will see Guest section. Type in the email addresses of your students separated by a comma. Or if you have a group email address, you can type that in so that the email goes to the entire group of students in one go. Next step, in guest permissions, leave all three boxes unticked. Once you're done, click save. Click send for this message. You will send the invitation email to all the students with the link to Zoom meeting and the password for that meeting. Now there is another way to do it. Once you have all the details filled in for a class meeting, click other calendars. Hit save you will get the meeting invitation message. Click copy to clipboard and close this box. Now you can send this meeting invitations to your students the way you prefer without going through the calendar. You can send this via email, send it through chat or maybe paste it in your learning management system. Just ensure whatever mode you prefer, you are only sending this invite to your students. So. Don't paste it on Facebook or Twitter. Yep, now let's wait for the meeting time. If Zoom is running on your computer, you will get a reminder to start your meeting. If not running, then you can open Zoom and click on the start button next to your upcoming meet. Now, this next step is optional, but I do it before every meeting. Click test speaker and microphone. Please select the appropriate speakers and test it. In my case, there is only one set of speakers. Make sure you hear the sound. Then proceed with the microphone test. In my case, there are two microphones. One that is built into the laptop and is pretty crappy. And the other one is the external mic I've connected to my computer, which is pretty decent. I will select the better microphone and test if it is working as expected. Everything seems to be good. So we can proceed.
Next, click join with computer audio. Yep, so the once the meeting has started, you will see this panel on the screen. Uh, I will take you through these buttons and I'll explain what each of these buttons do. And so the first one over here is the mute unmute button. Should I explain what it does? Of course not. It is self explanatory what it does. But if you see this small arrow next to it, that can be helpful to troubleshoot sound issues. If your students are unable to hear you, or if you are unable to hear them, use this button to make sure that the correct speakers and microphones are selected. The next button is to enable or disable your video. You can also do some cool stuff like setting a virtual background by clicking on the small arrow here and then clicking choose a virtual background. Virtual backgrounds are a good privacy measure if you don't want to share a video of your room with your class. To be frank with you, I use it because my room is very untidy at times and I don't want anyone to see that. There are also these video filters that you can use. I love these sunglasses. Please don't wear them when teaching. They may look cool if you are with, like, with your friends but not in front of the students. Next, we have the security controls. These are important. You can click the security button and lock the meeting once you think it will be too late for other students to join the class. So if the class were scheduled for 9 a.m., I would lock the meeting at 9, 10 a.m., which means if a student is more than 10 minutes late, they cannot join the class. Better be punctual next time, you lazy bum. I am very particular about punctuality but again it depends on you. You can leave the room open or unlocked for the entire meet if you want. And I prefer keeping the share screen, rename themselves and unmute themselves unchecked. This way students cannot rename themselves to some fantasy name or they cannot unmute themselves when I don't want them to talk. I can take the share screen just before I want one of my students to share the screen for presentation. Then we have the participants button which shows the list of participants. Since we have the waiting room enabled, this is where you will go first to scan through the list and kick out anyone who is not your student. Click the admit all button to allow the bunch of students into your virtual classroom. You can also mute and unmute participants as per the need. Want to remove a misbehaving student? Simply right click and remove. Easier than what it is in real life. Click on the participants button to toggle the visibility. One more thing about the participants button. A few minutes ago we discussed how students could raise hands if they want to ask a question. If a student raises their hands virtually by clicking the raise hand button in their Zoom app, you will get a notification on your screen like this. Shahid raised hand. If the participant list is open on the right side like this, you will see a blue hand next to the name of the participant. You can then unmute that student, listen to their question and later click on the lower hand button. Then you have the chat button through which you can either chat or even share files like PowerPoint presentations or Word documents with either individual students 
or the entire group. Just select the appropriate option in the tool field. You can click on this chat button again to toggle the visibility. Now, pay attention. Attention because this is very important. The share screen option. So if you want to share a presentation with a class or maybe explain something on a whiteboard, use the share screen button once you click on the share screen button you will get this share screen window the first option you see here is a whiteboard let me show you the whiteboard click whiteboard and click share once the whiteboard opens you will get an annotations panel on the top with multiple tools you can type a text draw a diagram add a stamp highlight stuff delete stuff undo redo and even add another page to the whiteboard You can then save the whiteboard if you want to share your artwork with your class for later reference or as a note. Mm -hmm. Click save, show in the folder and send that file via email, zoom chat or you can even upload it to your Google Classroom. If you accidentally close the annotations panel, you can get it back by moving the mouse cursor to the top of the screen and clicking the annotate button click x to close the whiteboard once you're done now let's look at how to share a powerpoint presentation with a class open the presentation first then click the share screen button you will see the programs open on your computer Select the PowerPoint presentation you want to share in the Zoom meeting and click Share. Hit F5 to run the presentation in full screen. Now, if you want to draw or highlight something on a slide within your presentation, move your mouse cursor to the top and click Annotate. Now you can draw things and explain the important stuff. Note that whatever you draw or annotate or highlight, uh, using this annotation tool on your PowerPoint presentation it actually does not get saved into your actual or to your original PowerPoint presentation which is running it just draws or highlights or annotates on the screen and it will save it as a picture it won't save as another PowerPoint presentation so don't worry if this is going to spoil your PowerPoint presentation it would not now uh, make sure you click the mouse button before you move on to the next slide if you want to clear all the annotations click clear and clear all drawings if you want to share another presentation go to the top and click new share Once you're done sharing, click stop share. If you all want me to make a dedicated video on screen sharing options within Zoom, let me know in the comments below. Also, just a reminder to subscribe to the channel to keep on learning important stuff. Next, we have the record option, which as discussed earlier, it's up to you and up to your school administration or also, it depends on your local laws, whether you want to record the meeting or not. Then we have the breakout rooms. This topic will require a video of its own, so I will cover this topic in another video. Zoom also has these reactions button, which you can use to appreciate, motivate or encourage your students when they are talking. 
before I jump to the end button, I will explain this turn on the original sound button. By default, Zoom Cloud Meetings does some background noise suppression and echo reduction to reduce fan noise or blower noise or any other consistent noise and even reduce the echo to some extent. Sometimes these audio enhancements, as I would call them, can be a bit aggressive and can lower the audio quality instead of enhancing it. When troubleshooting mic issues or any audio issues, try using original audio and see if your class can hear you better. Next, if you notice, when I move away from the zoom window, the main zoom window disappears. And I get this small pop-up on my screen. I can simply click this exit minimize screen button to make the zoom window appear full screen. Okay, so once the class is done, click the end button and then click end meeting for all to end the class meeting. If you just click the end meeting button, your students might still be there in a meeting and God knows what they would do. So it's better to click on the end meeting for all button before you leave the meeting. A recording window will pop up if you have chosen to record the meeting. Finally, the Zoom meeting folder is located at C users, your computer's profile name, documents, Zoom, and this folder will load up automatically and it will show you the recording. You can then upload this recording to YouTube or maybe share it with your school administration or just replay it in the next class. Okay, so that was about uh, the Zoom meetings. We covered how to sign up, the limitations of free account and paid account, and how to get an education account. Plus, we also went through all the settings, mostly security settings that you would like to, that I would want you to actually set up to avoid Zoom bombings. And then finally, we did some testing of the mic and the webcam before we actually started the meeting. And then once we started the meeting, I showed you how all the controls that you can use within the meeting. And of course, we also learned about uh, how to schedule a meeting. But yeah, we're almost done. Just one more thing I need to share. And that is the bonus that I promised you at the start of the meeting. I mean, start of this video. Uh, which will help you to reduce abrupt noises in the background. The zoom noise reduction feature does a pretty decent job in reducing consistent noises like air conditioner or blower or fan. Uh, but this app that I'm going to share right now will help you in reducing abrupt noises which just come up all of a sudden like kids shouting in the background or a dish falling on the ground and making that loud bang so yeah let's move on to that bonus section now so it's pretty obvious that you would like to take zoom meetings from a silent location with no background noises but sometimes it becomes difficult to find a silent spot in your house maybe due to kids playing ongoing repair work or sometimes due to a family get together this specific bonus will help you host a Zoom meeting during those noisy days. What you need to do is download CRISP. It's K-R-I-S-P and not C-R-I-S-P. Yep, so you need to download CRISP from crisp.ai. K-R-I-S-P dot A for Apple, I for India link is in the description anyways so click on the link in the description and then click get crisp for free you will get two options click the download app because that works best for zoom desktop app 
run through the setup process and the crisp app will come up on your taskbar over here sign in you can either sign up for a free account with your school email address or your personal email address you can also sign up with your Google account the benefit of signing up with a school email address is that you can then fill up a small form to get unlimited minutes of noise free background for free for six months with a personal account you get 120 minutes of free noise cancellation every month which I guess should be okay for those moments when you have no choice but to take a class in a noisy environment so once you click sign up check your email for a six digit verification code to the crisp account and click start setup click on zoom on the choose your app screen it will show you how to set up zoom for crisp hit next and then finish open zoom click on the profile button and go to settings then audio under microphone select crisp microphone uncheck automatically adjust volume and set suppress background noise to low now you may have this question in your mind as to why not simply use zooms noise reduction feature and why crisp as i said before zoom does a pretty a decent job at reducing persistent noises but not abrupt noises crisp uses artificial intelligence to reduce these intermittent noises and does a tremendous job at it the best part is the noise reduction happens on your computer so nothing is transmitted over the internet so it is fast and secure okay once you are done with zoom settings go to your taskbar and click on crisp make sure remove noise is enabled that's it another thing make sure that you sign up with your school email first and then fill up the form in the description to get six months of unlimited crisp service for free so here's a quick demo Okay, here I'm talking right now and someone just banged a plate. Someone is banging a plate. I'm not sure who that person is, but that's pretty disturbing in the meeting. Okay, here I'm talking right now and someone just banged a plate. Someone is banging a plate. I'm not sure who that person is, but that's pretty disturbing in the meeting. A tip. This Zoom tutorial is systematically spread over chapters. At any time you want to rewatch a part of the tutorial, simply go through the table of contents in the description of the video and click on the timestamp beside the part you want to watch again. If you have any questions related to Zoom, do ask in the comment section below. Just before I end this video, I would request you to either like or dislike this video depending on how much value you got out of it. And if you want to support my efforts, buy me a coffee by clicking on the buy me a coffee link in the description. Do subscribe to this channel if you want to see more helpful videos like this. Lastly, let me know in the comments below how easy was the Zoom tutorial for teachers. I won't mind a one word comment like easy, straightforward, complicated or too difficult. But make sure I get feedback so that I can improve. Thank you for your time and hope to see you soon. Goodbye.